Hello, everyone. Good morning, Rachel. Hi, Good Erica. Morning. Hi, Elka. Hi, Stacey. Good morning. Hi, everyone. How is everyone? Wonderful. Hey. We have our beautiful co-host, Dr. Kira Barr here with us. Hello. Oh, it's so nice just for me to hang out with all of you lovely ladies here too. <laughs> well, welcome everyone who has joined the call. It's so nice to see some familiar faces here. I know that um, it's difficult for us to see each other at this time. So it just warms my heart that everyone is here. Uh, we have actually up to 80 people who are going to be joining us on this call, which is just so incredible. And I just really want to thank everyone for taking the time to join us today. This is just going to be a really lovely, healing, informational, educational event just to help you guys make some smarter decisions around your skin, your beauty, and your radiance. Because... The more and more that I talk to these lovely ladies who are joining us today in this event, the more I learn and I just can't help but want to share it with all of you guys. So Dr. Kira Barr, she is a fantastic dermatologist who I've been able to connect with over this last little while. Everyone on the call here has been on my podcast, so I do recommend that you check them out. And just I'm, I'm just really grateful for everyone rising to this occasion just to really promote healthy body conscious practices to support yourselves as mothers your daughters or daughters supporting their mothers and vice versa so we're all going to be learning together today so one of the first things that i just want to jump into is this really big problem that i'm seeing right now which is actually one of the reasons why dr kira Barr and i decided to co-host this event and so the big problem we're seeing through you know people that i worked with for many years but also in online consultations especially right now is that people are buying online like crazy there are sales going on everywhere on skincare. People are over consuming, over complicating their routines. And a lot of people are still buying health and beauty products from auction websites, AKA, you know, I'm not gonna say the specific names, but you know what those auction websites are. And this is a really big health concern. So that is definitely going to be big on the speaking point. So Dr. Kira Barr, why don't you hop on here and just say hello. And then I'm just going to uh, introduce Dr. Kirbar to everyone here. So Dr. Kirbar. Oh, I think I've lost her for some reason. Oh, I didn't unmute myself. Perfect. Technology. I'm learning. Um, <laughs> good morning. <laughs> I'm excited to be here. Um, yeah, I think there's a lot of great talking points that we can make, um, mm -hmm. not just about the quality of the skincare, but really uh, the intention behind using that skincare and being able to get the best return on your investment possible. So, mm -hmm. you know, for, for me, um, you know, it's so, it's become so clear that what shows up on our skin is, it's not only a window to and reflection of what's happening on the surface, but what's happening in our lives, which really begs the question of what kind of life do you want to be living? And how do you want to be you know, how do you want to feel living it? Um, and to your point, like what I found is that so many women and men, <laughs> you know, the um, beauty industry for the cosmetic industry for men is really booming. And they come to me after spending like hundreds or thousands of dollars on skincare products um, because those products aren't delivering on their promise. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, they might've gotten some improvement, but most often they've taken a 10 X loss. Uh, on their investment because this stuff is expensive. And um, so when I work with people uh, similar to, to you, we're very aligned in our approach is you know, going beyond the surface and really getting to the root of why they're using the products in the first place. Oh, uh, your, so your approach to the why is just the, the why of self-care and beautification is so incredible. And that's really, you know, why I felt led to, to do this wonderful event with you. Yeah. Because you're a dermatologist, you offer rejuvenation procedures as well, among many other things. But yeah, you're going to be giving us some pretty great PSAs on skin health, yeah. checking our moles at home, 
and so many other things. But yes, please yeah. get back to uncovering the why for us all today. Yeah, yeah. I think it's so important that um, my goal is for always for people to get a 10x, 100x return on their investment. And it's investing in yourself and building that strong foundation from the inside out. It's the most powerful act of self-care you could ever do, which is, I think, what we're going to be talking about a lot today. So I'm really excited to dive into the conversations. Yeah. So I'd like you to just expand a little bit more on the why and how you like mm -hmm. to unpack that because you have a really beautiful way of oh, helping you. people uncover that. And the, you know, the concept of beautification has been done since the Egyptian times. So for us to want to look after ourselves, this is not new stuff. Right. It's totally not. Um, and for me, um, you know, it really comes down to permission and, um, and love. And whether you're looking after your skin from a place of love and acceptance and confidence or from a place of self-loathing and, mm -hmm. you know, unworthiness, which is totally understandable in today's society and the cultural pressures. We get into a pattern of looking at magazine ads or social media and, and we see people who, who look like we want to look. Um, and so we are looking for that quick fix so that we can, you know, look that way too. But when I ask people, right, like this is a challenge <laughs> is, you know, it, when was the last time you actually stood in front of a mirror, stark naked and said, I look amazing, right? I mean, I'm not talking about some quick affirmation that the latest self-help guru offered. It's like when you lovingly and lovingly admire your form mm -hmm. and feel beautiful and grateful for the body you're in. And I know that sounds totally crazy because that is not something that we are used to doing. Um, but so often we just look in the mirror, especially as women, and we just you know, take that mental Sharpie and circle all the flaws and we overlook what's beautiful. And so I think that's where the focus is, 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 you know, we, we, when we do that, we tend to make a list of all the serums and lotions and potions that we think are going to fix the issue. Um, and there's nothing wrong with wanting to look younger and look better, but I think it all comes down to your why mm -hmm. having real clarity about, you know, why you think you need those products, what your real trouble spots are. Because when people come to me and they're like, it's my wrinkles, it's my dark spots. And I ask them, okay, so why now? Why, are do, you, why do you want to use this product or have this procedure now? And it's never about the wrinkles. Right now. It all comes down to they don't feel worthy. They don't feel confident because they've recently gotten divorced or some other life event. And so we need to start there because we could, you know, do all the procedures and, and, and have them spend a ton of money, but they'll never get that return that they're really hoping for. And I think, you know, all the people on this call are really invested in helping women especially feel empowered and beautiful and, you know, from the inside out and the outside. And it, it's, it, they're not separate. It's, it's absolutely true. And before we go any further, you've mentioned media. We have Stacey Lindsay here. We're going to be diving into beautiful Stacey Lindsay. Why don't you just say hi quickly here? Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so excited. This is just such an incredibly generous and incredibly needed, needed conversation. So yeah. thank you for opening this up, Rachel. But yeah, I'm really excited to dive in because it's so interesting, Dr. Barr, already what you said, everything resonates. And on the other end of the spectrum, really, I think there's a real responsibility for, of course, I work in the media, I'm a journalist, and I think there's a real responsibility right now to start speaking straight about and start reporting straight about this kind of, quote, wellness industry, this beauty industry. Because for so long as a consumer, I have always felt not enough. I've always felt, you know, when I read a lot of traditional women's magazines or any traditional publications, I always felt like I was lacking something because the message it was feeding me was, oh, do this to get this real quick. And I thought, well, what, you know, why, why am I not good enough? Of course, as you said, we want to look, you know, we want to maintain our vitality and our health and all of that. But I also just think it's taking a step back, slowing down, and really becoming discerning consumers, dis discerning citizens, really. Mm -hmm. So it's such an interesting, you know, how these two ends of the spectrum really come together. And so much of it, too, I think is about 
community. I think we're really, really, really craving connection right now with ourselves and with others. And we're noticing that because we are so connected, obviously, but in a lot of ways, we're really still kind of disconnected. And how can we bring that back? And how can we start to really perpetuate this message that vitality, radiance, beauty is not about comparing yourself to somebody else. It's not about, okay, checking off maybe what a particular magazine is telling you. It's really about doing your research, mm -hmm. homing in on you, listening to what feels good and, and supporting, you know, generally supporting yourself and generally supporting other people. Yeah. So we're going to be oh. actually diving into this at the very end. So yeah. you're going to want to stay tuned for that conversation. And then we have Dr. Erica Gray here. She has her her doctorate in pharmacy. Just say a quick hello, and then I'll introduce Dr. Elka Cook as well. Good morning, everybody. It's such an honor to be here, and I, I love the message that all of you are, are bringing to this because I think a lot of us are moms as well, and so it's like, what do we what do we, what's the example we set forth for our daughters? Because they pay mm. really close attention. And um, I think a lot of times when we aren't self-confident and we're not excited about how we look, they pick up on that. And Definitely. so how do we model that for them? Oh, I cannot wait for, for the segment, um, for your part of the segment here. And then we also have Dr. Alka Cook. Say hello. Good morning and how wonderful to be in this circle of women, you know, like, like it's supposed to be when we would all sit around a circle and exchange ideas and give advice and take care of each other and our children. So um, I feel very much aligned with all of your guys' message. Um, I have had multiple personal experiences where the the connection and i and i'm on the journey still the connection to myself i feel like there's a deep disconnection you know mm -hmm. with nature mm -hmm. but also with ourselves right like really um understanding what it is that we need and and trying to blend out what the world is trying to tell us that we need mm -hmm. so i've been on this journey and for me nature and connection to nature really comes in and excited to talk about that a little bit more. Yeah, this is great. So Dr. Kier Barr, let's get back into our conversation here. And is it common for people to want to step up their self-care and rejuvenation after certain life events? Um, yeah, <laughs> I would say that it is. And again, as I mentioned, you know, it really comes back to your why. And, you know, how do you want to feel and having that clarity, um, you know, about what it is that, that you're looking for, the outcome that you're looking for. And as, you know, Stacy mentioned, you know, in, in the magazines and, and in social, um, there's this pressure to, that everything is supposed to look perfect mm -hmm. on the surface, but it creates this really vicious cycle. Um, and then we try and add, mask this inner pain that we have and loneliness and, and, and we tend to focus really just on the external and um, the things that people see in hopes that this will make them love us or it'll take away that sense of loneliness. But deep down, because we have that fear, like what if they know the real you, the less instant, instant worthy version? Um, and that just keeps us in a feeling, you know, this, this, this constant state of feeling insecure and overwhelmed so yeah and I think what we really all want for ourselves is to be our most beautiful and radiant version and the more I learn about all mm -hmm. of this is that if you want to be radiant and if you want to you know really show up for yourself and, and your family in the most beautiful way radiance is it's almost like your truest most authentic most grounded centered balanced and aligned version of yourself, it's okay for you to look after yourself. It's okay for you to perform self-care for yourself because when you start to do that, other people are going to take notice and then, you know, you're going to be that example, lead by example, which is fantastic. So yeah. Dr. Kirbar, what can we do at home to be on top of our skin health? Yeah, I think first and foremost, as I mentioned earlier, before I got cut out, it's, it's really just... It, 
acknowledging yourself for everything that you are doing, right? Yes. I mean, right now people are yes. juggling a million things um, and skin health is so much about how you feel in your skin. So learning to love all the parts of you is so important. Um, and, you know, I think the two, my two top recommendations are always that most dermatologists are not talking about is sleep, number one. It is like the ultimate rejuvenation tool um, mm -hmm. because it, it helps your hormone balance and there's a few hormones, especially melatonin and cortisol, which are instrumental um, melatonin in promoting your skin health and cortisol, which can um, mess with your skin health big time as also your waistline. Um, and then, you know, managing stress, like there's no way to get rid of stress but learning tools, and that's a lot of what I teach when I work with people, is, is how to make stress work to your advantage. So those are the two things that I think, and they're free. They don't cost a thing. Um, you know, sleeping and spending time outside. I know Dr. Cook is going to talk about this, but yes. there are so many simple things that you can do um, so that, you know, you can start taking care of your skin health while you don't have access to your practitioner, like you are your own best doctor <laughs> right now. It's true. So yeah. yeah. We have our in own intuition for a reason because mm -hmm. really only we know what's right for body, mind, spirit, energy. And what you mentioned about dermatologists, a lot of dermatologists, a lot of physicians like Dr. Elka Cook, who's an ER doc turned functional medicine practitioner, a lot of physicians want to have this time to talk about all the impacts of holistic health and healing, but not everybody just has the time to do that. So I'm just really proud of you, Dr. Kirbar, for doing the work that you do and, you know, really stepping into, okay, how can we best support our clients and our communities in really meaningful ways, which might go beyond the more traditional type of approach that we've been taught and yeah. we're going through evolutions all the time in our world and, and how we practice and things like that. So I just really want to commend you and where can people find you? Yeah. So thank you. I appreciate that. I mean, that was one of the biggest reasons I walked away from traditional practice because seven or 15 minutes to spend with a patient just isn't enough mm -hmm. because it's so much more than what's on the surface, right? It's so much more than that. So um, people can find me, um, you know, to get to know how I approach things. My book, The Skin Whisper is a great place to find and you can find that on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. Um, and then my website, drkirabar.com is probably the best place because I just put up a free masterclass so that um, women can really start to be empowered. Women and men can be empowered of, you know, really dialing in that clarity, really understanding, you know, how best to approach uh, skin health so that it's not just a quick fix, it's for the long haul. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that a lot of you listening are starting to really kind of clue into that's my message. It's not here. Here's this shiny beauty cream and treatment. It's, it's very much body, mind, spirit, energy, and alignment. All right. So we're going to move on to our talk with Dr. Erica Gray. And Dr. Erica Gray uh, has become a dear friend of mine, and she's very forward-thinking uh, woman, and she's recently started on a lovely four-step skin routine with me, and I wanted to answer any questions she might have about her skincare products, her routine, changes she's already starting to notice in her skin, and what she likes about the products and ingredients, because she has her doctorate in pharmacy, and she really understands ingredients, which is fantastic, and she also has a, a few lovely daughters as well. So this is going to be a great time to discuss ingredients and what we should be avoiding, such as parabens, phthalates, sulfates, artificial dyes, and fragrances. So Dr. Erica Gray, why don't you hop on? Thank you so much, Rachel. This is, this is really exciting. So yes, I had a consult with you and it was, it was really, really eye-opening um, just for a number of different from a number of different perspectives, because A, I had never had one before, and then um, B, just really all the different steps that you took me through. But really, the proof was in the pudding when the products arrived. And there were a couple things that really struck me. Um, we're, you know, we were talking about fragrances earlier, is that they just all smell really, really mild and really mm -hmm. nice. And if you notice that a lot of products that have harsh chemicals in them, um, 
or a lot of synthetic products, they, there's a there's a smell to it that is does not it can almost be offensive, and especially people who are really sensitive have sensitive. Um, smells or just sensitive to different scents will pick up on that. So that was a really interesting thing. Um, I noticed, so I followed Rachel's advice, which was twice a day, I needed to wash my face and actually yep. <laughs> cleanse and actually put moisturizer on versus the one time a day that I threw a few things on. And lo and behold, in two weeks, um, my skin actually changed to the point that my husband said, wow, what's going on? Oh, your skin looks different. I don't know. I don't quite know what it is, but it looks, it looks better. <laughs> oh, that's adorable. Which I think is a huge testament. But the big thing that I noticed was, and we'll get into this a little bit, the genetics was I had noticed mm -hmm. I was starting to get pigmentation and breakouts on my neck. And it didn't matter if I changed my food. It didn't matter if I fasted, they were still there. And your products actually took it away to the point that, you know, getting back to what Kira was saying and Stacy is that I wasn't embarrassed about my neck anymore. So it wasn't a problem for me to put my hair up and go, gosh, do I need to cover that up? And I think that really, um, it, it's it, that type of message and that type of dilemma that all women really struggle with and men. Um, mm -hmm. it really makes us start to doubt ourselves. Are we doing something wrong? Um, what is it that we're not doing or we should be doing? And we get put into this level of turmoil, which doesn't help us. It stresses out our adrenals. It raises our cortisol. Um, and so it has this cascade effect that I really didn't stop and appreciate until actually sticking with your program and putting on the products religiously and seeing the difference. And that was... Um, really, really nice to see. And the other thing that I thought was fascinating is as a pharmacist, I only use pharmaceutical grade supplements and pharmaceutical grade skincare products that mm -hmm. I had access to, but your products were a whole nother level and really made a, a difference within two weeks. So that really spoke to me about just the quality of what you're bringing to the table too. Yeah, I love hearing that because actually the research shows it should take about a month for your skin routine to start to work because our skin cell cycle is is about a month. And but but really what I see and hear from is about two weeks of just looking after yourself. So if you haven't already downloaded my treatment planning guide or my sophisticated skin cheat sheet that you'll get when you register for my newsletter, it's really helpful. And so Dr. Erica Gray, you're also the co-founder and chief medical officer of Toolbox Genomics. So when we're talking about self-care or even the word biohacking, which people have started to call me that, and I'm like, well, this is just self-care stuff. We're just doing it in a more slick way. Being able to isolate exactly what our physiology wants from us from a genetic level so that we can start to avoid different things that are, say, going to clog up our detox pathways or some things like coconut oil that might be great for other people might not actually be great for some people that have an inability to process it. So tell us a little bit about how toolbox genomics can kind of like, you know, genetic analyses and things like that can really impact our self-care. So I think the best thing is that for the first time, it takes the guesswork out because mm -hmm. now you actually get that little information guide, that little cheat sheet to who you are. And now you get to ask questions of the data. Like, well, okay, so do I need more folate? Do I need more vitamin C? And, and where am I in my life? Because I think it's really important for people to realize you have your genes. Those don't change. The expression of it changes. Yes. And it's where you are in that continuum and you may have a greater need for certain nutrients during pregnancy or breastfeeding. And then you're going to have a different nutrient need as you're going through menopause. But again, it's all going to be dictated at that ground level of what are those genetic predispositions. And so I think about things like um, vitamin C and glutathione, because we always think about detox coming from the liver, but our skin is the biggest organ. And we have a lot of these genes hanging out in our skin and they're going to play a role in detoxification in the skin. And so if we aren't supporting that and we don't have the necessary nutrients either from our food or from our supplements, 
we're going to, it's going to be a lot harder for us to handle the toxins that we come in contact with. And so people who have what we call an impaired detoxification system, I would, you know, and you look at that from a genetic perspective, I would extrapolate it to the skin because we know that those genes are in the skin. And so this is where when you're using ingredients like the phthalates and um, the artificial dyes, et cetera, mm -hmm. it's going to, you're essentially taking an organ that is not running at optimal speed speed and you're asking it to work even harder without giving it the necessary nutrients to support it. So when you have the genetic information, then you can make better choices as to where you're going to focus and how you're going to support it. Yeah. And the reason I'm bringing this topic up is because people try and Google and YouTube what's right for them, right? What's the, the best supplement right now? What's the best antioxidant to use for the skin? What's the best moisturizer to get rid of my wrinkles, right? And so when we start to get a little bit more uh, intentional with our bodies and doing some of these labs, working with functional medicine providers, working with genetic analysts and things like that, you're going to take your self-care to a whole other level and really help you to isolate things in your environment that could actually be accelerating your aging. So Erica, tell us a little bit of, about yourself. I just really want you to share some things that are really pertinent for you in this event today. So I think the um, most telling thing was, I, you know, the topic was mothers and daughters and, and families, is my daughter would watch me um, you know, getting ready and, and she would always make comments about, you know, oh, mama, you're so beautiful or, oh, I love what you're doing. And I would, but I also noticed that she also watched my bad habits as right. well. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that, you know, like, for example, she would go after her skin. And if I scolded her, she said, but you do the same thing. And it, and she said, so why is it okay for you to do it, but not me? And it just was such a reminder of they watch us. They watch us all the time, the good and the bad. And what is it that we're setting forth? And just like Kira was saying, you know, that permission, that self-love, we need to know how to do it ourselves because we're setting that example for our children. And I would say, you know, for, for my son as well, how is he going to view his future wife or girlfriend? Mm. It's the same thing. And I think it's just we, as women, we tend to discount the compliments. And I always, I'm really reminded and struck when my daughter looks at me and says, mama, you are so beautiful. Aww. And it, it's just, it's so heartwarming, but she means it. And you know, this is not the time for me to discount it or qualify it, but truly revel in it and, and appreciate it. And it's the same thing. I think our spouses do it to us too. Like, wow, you look amazing. And we go, well, you know, it would look a little bit better if this has changed and I had makeup on. And, and, but they don't. They just look at us for who we are and they love us in that moment. And so we need to do that for ourselves. And mm -hmm. how can we do more of that? And I think, you know, this um, platform is just such a great opportunity for us to help get that message out. Fantastic. So quick question for you. How is stepping up your skincare routine sort of made you think about your self-care practices in general a little bit differently? Uh, it's a habit. So really like the, the reason it's successful, the reason it's working is just I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. And I think so much of our self-care practice is just that you just need to do it. Mm -hmm. And it's so easy to say, well, like I'll just skip it today. But it really, as you pointed out, it's only two minutes. It's, it's, it's not a massive amount of time in our day. And I think a lot of these self-care opportunities that we have, whether it's journaling or just going outside for a little bit, literally five minutes can be a huge reset for us. And it's five minutes out of a 24 hour day. Definitely. And now do you feel better equipped to help those around you with your knowledge of healthy skin practices from what we've learned together? Like for example, when your daughter starts to ask you about questions about her skin, if she's starting to experience acne, Oh, yes. I mean, she, the first thing she did was, can I, can I try your products? And she absolutely loves the magnesium scrub. And oh, she, yeah, that one. she sees a huge difference in her skin. And so really, I mean, it, it just was such a great reminder to me of that's what people like you and Kira are there for that. You know, I, I can, my, my gift or my help in my knowledge of self-care with skincare is really to direct them to people, to you, because the two of you are going to be able to give them such pointed and focused and personalized advice. Yeah. I mean, that's the whole point of us showing up is to just help each other out, right? We can all lift each other up and build each other up. 
So are there any certain labs and genetic tests we can actually take to learn about specific ingredients and lifestyle modifications to help us age well and reduce inflammation in our body? Because newsflash, inflammation, inflammaging, it's a thing. Yes, it's a it's a big thing, and I think we don't realize how much our diet is going is that underlying current that's going to push that aging. And so, I think that um, I'm partial to our detox panel for obvious reasons. Um, nutrition optimization, so really understanding what are the nutrients that your body may need additional support with. Um, and then also um, around the aging, cardiometabolic, where we want to look at how does our body handle glucose? How does it handle sugar and insulin? Because those can be two huge drivers for inflammation, um, the age-related age glycation um, that we get for our skin and ages and accelerates the aging as well. Sugar really does that. And understanding how our body processes it as, at a fundamental level to me is just such a game changer because it's going to shape how you're going to structure your food, how it's going to structure what you mm -hmm. eat, when you eat. And, and this is, this is a long-term process. This is not, uh, you know, we're going to do this for two days or a week. No, because your genes don't change. So this is something you're going to work on through your life. But now you have these guide rails to suggest where you need to be and where you need to focus. Yeah, you mentioned something earlier about how when we move into menopause or postmenopause, our hormones are changing. So in order for us to become rebalanced again, there oftentimes are some adjustments that we need to make at that time because when things go haywire in our bodies, we live in a world of duality, you know, good, bad, light, dark, healthy, unhealthy. And with our hormones, if you're too far on one spectrum and you know too far on another, you're out of balance. So being able to understand how we can become more balanced, body, mind, spirit, energy, hormones, this is all pretty key stuff. It really is. And it's balanced to you, right? That's, I think, the yes. other important thing that we have to remind ourselves. It's not balanced to what we see in the magazine or what a friend tells us. It's balanced to who we are, our own unique physiology because I may fundamentally need more estrogen than somebody else, but I would never know that if I didn't test, if I didn't do my genetics and understand how my body processes estrogen and progesterone mm -hmm. and really knowing that. And so I think it's so important for us to always take our, the context of our genetics and what we're doing in that timeline of where we are in our life. Yeah. So let's just jump back into your skincare routine that you're on. So you're on cleansing, moisturizing, sun protection, exfoliation, and you're already starting to notice some differences, which is great because I bet you anything, you are totally neglecting this portion of your neck right here. Oh yeah. I never touched it. It was just this section, you know, yeah. the chin to the forehead. Yeah. And why I recommend not just taking care of the face because when you're in your sixties, you'll end up with floating floating head syndrome. And I happen to know that there are some just beautiful women who I've worked with over the years in here that are following my advice and they are total babes in their 60s. So I miss you all so much. It's so great to see you on this call here. I'm very grateful for you. So I want to talk about next steps with you, Dr. Erica Gray. So you've stabilized your skin with a great routine. And now uh, we, we spoke earlier you're wanting to do some other things at home. So the next step for you is going to be at-home dermal rolling, which is really, really exciting. I can't tell you enough how many questions I get via email or social media. Rachel, what brand of roller should I buy? Rachel, where do I buy a roller? Well, newsflash, you do not want to just buy a roller, especially from these you know, shady auction websites. That Louis Vuitton handbag definitely could look pretty real, right? <laughs> Same with dermal rollers. There's knockoffs of just about everything. Skincare products, supplements, things like that. So do watch that show Broken on Netflix. It's going to be a big eye opener for you. It's all about safety because when you're safer, you're healthier, you're going to be your most beautiful, radiant version of yourself. So dermal rolling, you got a copy of my dermal rolling cheat sheet. That's going to kind of be your, your, your guidebook, my lovely husband here, he is the moderator for this event, Gabriel. We filmed this really adorable video of uh, me sort of like showing dermo rolling on him. It's really sweet. Uh, but, but it's, it's going to be a really easy to uh, implement option for you. We've gone through which depth is going to be right for you, what type of roller, 
what products to use afterwards. So that's going to be really cool, but it's not just about buying the roller. It's about knowing how to prepare the skin, how to actually use the roller, the directions, the pressure, how to prep your skin. And then the products that you're using afterwards are actually going to be um, absorbed deeper into the skin, not just topically. So you have to use specific products that are researched to be safe and effective with dermal rolling because you're creating little channels of injury in the skin, kind of like Aridine Lawn, which is really, really exciting. Well, I'm, I'm super excited because as I said, I, and I'm so grateful to you for the direction that you've provided because I literally would have jumped in and done everything all at once and then it would not have benefited me. So I really appreciated the stepwise approach. And so I'm excited to try the dermal rolling. Yeah. And it's not about overwhelm with your routine. It's just about making, I see Stacey Lindsay here. I love this. <laughs> I see you smiling with all this. It's about making strategic steps, right? So a lot of people will dive into rolling using things like a retinol or a vitamin A. And what happens is when you start to create little controlled injuries into the skin, you're going to maybe stimulate some redness and irritation and flaking. And if you don't have the right products on hand to mitigate that, then you're going to have that retinoid reaction phase, things like that. So that's why you want to get things stabilized first and have good products on hand to mitigate that expected irritation from cellular renewal and a little bit of stimulation in the skin. Well, I'm excited. It's going to be, I, I can't wait to see what the next month brings with that. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I mean, you, you look great for this call. Your hair is beautiful. Your makeup looks great. We're matching, hey? <laughs> oh, yes, we are. The, the blue. I love it. Yeah, this is great. Uh, so where can people find you, Erica? So toolboxgenomics.com. And for anyone who's listening, if you put in forward slash Dr. Erica with 10, and it's Erica with a K, you can get a 10% off. Um, I talked about the nutrition optimization. I talked about detox. Um, those are just really great starting products to get to know who you are from a genetic perspective and what are some steps that you can take or maybe answer some questions about, do you need this particular ingredient um, or supplement or diet in your life? That's going to really help you um, answer some of those questions. And then um, Instagram, it's uh, at the Gene Whisperer and also um, at Toolbox Genomics. I love it. So this is where health and wellness is going, guys. Looking at our genes, yeah. really customizing things. This is where skincare is going custom skincare. So stay tuned for that because that is a really, really cool topic. So thanks so much for joining us, uh, Dr. Erica Gray. Feel free to chime in when you, know, you feel like it's relevant to pop on and share during the rest of this presentation. Okay. Thank you, Rachel. All right, Dr. Kira Barr, we are co-hosts for this event. It is your time to shine. <laughs> thanks. I just... Um... I'm sorry, I had to do the phone. This is just kind of one of these, we're just going to roll with it. Um, but I wanted to, you know, um, kind of echo what um, Dr. Gray was talking about in terms of the skin. And, um, you know, most people don't appreciate that, that the skin has the same machinery in it as like the HBA access. So a top down when we talk about stress and other things that our skin can actually generate those very same hormones. So it's not your imagination that, you know, that stress, when you're stressed, you break out. When you break out, you become stressed. It is literally in this vicious cycle. So being able to support yourself from the inside out and the outside in becomes that much more important. Um, so really understanding how the body works and what your individual needs are, are really are really significant. So it's, it's, it's a tremendous asset, uh, the services that Dr. Gray offers. So, um, mm -hmm. so thank you for that. And so now I'm excited because I have the opportunity to introduce Dr. Elfie Cook, who has a fantastic background as an emergency room physician turned functional medicine doctor and really understands our microbiomes. And so now she specializes in gut health and metabolic or optimization, hormone balance, and anti-aging. And so I would love it for Elke to share how interacting with nature, you had mentioned it briefly, but I really would love you to dive deep into how interacting with nature can be helpful for our skin as well as our mental health. Um, and there are a number of studies to reference the science of how being in nature can help us be healthier and more beautiful and radiant from the inside out. So I would love it for you to take it away and share a little bit more about you and, and your journey. 
Thank you so much, Dr. Kira. I, I also would only echo that the future of medicine is personalized. There's no doubt about it. There are so many things that we can specifically test for each of our individual metabolism and how we work and which specific nutrients we need. It is not a one size fits all approach mm -hmm. anymore. So there's so many tools. So just to sort of get back also to my story, um, I started out as an ER physician and I specifically remember after, you know, a, like a, a, a long stretch, I'm sure you, you grew up in, in the Western medical world as well, you know, a long stretch of 36 hours of being on call and just completely stressful and not sleeping and, you know, the skin starts to show it. But I had this, this insight that if I would go outside after my long hours of work and I would go for a run and and if I just sort of immerse myself and marvel at, wow, the tree is beautiful and wow, this lake just fits this landscape perfectly and the air is just so sweet, you know, <laughs> I, I just remember one specific incident where I was like, wow, I could be super stressed at work, but as long as I can come out here and immerse myself in nature, I'm okay. Like my stress levels are, are back down and, and I can completely let it go and step out of my work in the hospital. So that was sort of my first realization that, wow, there, there's like something to being outside and to being in nature. And then of course, now as a functional medicine physician, I see how stress is involved in a complete breakdown of our body systems. And skin is a body system. You know, cortisol is a breakdown hormone. It's a catabolic hormone. So it will break down the skin. It'll, it'll create more wrinkles, it'll break down your muscles, it'll break down the gut lining. And many times what I see is that we're already at that edge of the, at, at the cliff, right? And our toes are already hanging over it. And it doesn't take very much. It just takes a little bit of this for us to go over that cliff. Um, you know, people always think, you know, there has to be this big event. No, it could just be a little fender bender. It could be a little fight with your husband. And the next day, you know, your, your gut's co totally broken down. You start to break out. So it doesn't take a lot because we're already bathed in this environment of stress and constantly being on and caring for everybody, especially as women, right? We're caretakers, we're nurturers. But unfortunately, we forget to take care of ourselves and, and nurture ourselves. And so I see my role many times as, you know, getting people back into balance and pointing this out because when you're in the middle of it, it's really hard to see it. Um, I also had this realization not too long ago during a meditation that you know, the trees actually absorb our waste product of CO2. But I had this, this feeling, this knowing, what if they also absorb our negative energy? I think we're just at the beginning of learning about energy and vibration. But what if that's the reason that when we go out into nature, we feel better after just going for a walk? So this is the gold stuff, by the way, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, again, it, it was just, during my meditation is just sort of a realization that I came to. I think there's more and more people speaking up and learning about the vibration and the energy and the trees absorb our CO2. Why wouldn't they also absorb this energy that we're emitting? We know, we know from studies that the energy that comes from our heart, the, the vibration affects the person that is standing in front of you. The energy of love nurtures you know, my children in a different way than the energy of like hate, right? We know that that's already clear. So, so I've been really tapping into, um, into nature for, to release that, that negativity that can sometimes build up when you're in buildings, you know, in buildings the entire time. Mm -hmm. So I love that. Thing. I thank you so much for sharing that powerful message. You know, I think your point, the, the skin, I mean, stress is probably, it, that's the thing, as your largest organ, your skin totally, it's, it can be your best cheerleader or your worst confidant. If you are stressed out, it is going to show up in your skin. 
we know that cortisol levels, they stimulate those oil glands. So that's one of the biggest contributors to acne, those fine lines and wrinkles. Like you said, cortisol is a driver for breaking down collagen, not only breaking it down, but preventing new collagen from forming. And so I think, again, a lot of these skincare um, regimens or, or treatments come down to that nurturing and nourishing of ourselves from, from the inside doesn't cost a thing. Getting outside does not cost a thing. Um, and most people think that dermatologists hate for people to go outside and that's so not true. We just want you to be protected because um, most people don't appreciate that skin cancer is the most prevalent cancer uh, in our country and rising around the world. So we just want you to be protected, but getting outside is so vital for those feel good endorphins. Um, and, you know, taking it a step further with what you said in terms of the energy vibration and, and all the other benefits that, to be honest, um, I'm open to learning about. If you had asked me about this eight years ago, I would have been like, uh, that is crazy talk. And now I'm like, oh, bring it on. <laughs> Let's talk about this. So I think it's so wonderful that you are bringing, you know, this concept forward. Um, so tell us a little bit more about uh, how you like to interact with nature. I mean, you said you were outside and having a meditation, but I'd love for you to expand on that. Yeah, and so just to kind of spin your thought a little further, the um, you know go going outside and going into the sun, um, and getting a little bit of vitamin D. So that's that's huge. You know, vitamin D is so important for our immune system. It's important mm -hmm. for our bones. It actually protects against certain kinds of cancers. Um, so uh, I'm 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 all for getting your little micro doses of sun responsibly i'm not talking about baking in the sun for hours but what i what i do many times is during my office hours i will between patients i will go outside i will walk around the block and i just let the, the sun get on my arms you know put sunscreen on your face but let let you know build up your vitamin d on your arms on your legs whenever you can because I test for it and how many times I see low vitamin D levels, I can't tell you. They're, everybody is suboptimal and it's not because they're not taking their vitamin D supplement, it's because they, we, we just are not connected to the outside. It's because we have a lack of sunshine because mm -hmm. think about it, how many times do we go from your house in the morning to the car, to the office, to you know, maybe grab some lunch at a restaurant, back to the office, back to the car, back to the house. It does not leave time for a little bit of sun exposure. So I, I've almost gotten to the point where I'm gonna ask my patients to do walking um, appointments with me whenever I can, you know, whoever's open to it. Hey, let's go for a walk outside and let's talk about things that are going on. I haven't quite figured out how to put that into the routine, but it's a work in progress. So, so little mini breaks um, for me personally is how I connect um, when I'm busy at work. I also remind people that the most intimate connection that we have with nature is the food that we eat. It's our most intimate, intimate connection that we'll ever have with anything. You know, we take the earth and integrate it and alchemize it into our system. So be really careful what you put in there because nothing will touch you like what you eat. Um, other things that we love to do and we're very fortunate that we're able to do it here in, in our family is just go outside barefoot. You know, my kids are barefoot all day long. They get dirty. They expose themselves to a lot of different microorganisms. Um, and I love gardening these days, you know. <laughs> Um, so I get my hands dirty, get all these little microbes on my fingers, and, and I know I'm doing something really good for my um, immune system. I love that you, you brought that up, um, Dr. Cook, about being outside, because it, it occurred to me that in like the turn of the century, when people were sick or they had TB, they would send them out to the country to get sun to be out in the farms and away from the industrial cities yeah. and we don't do that anymore but yeah. our opportunity to emulate that is yeah. really to get outside as you said with nature and garden right. and go for the walk to right. get reconnected right and i'm sure dr kira Barr can also talk more about it but we use uv rays 
as a form of treatment for eczema, right? <laughs> so we use the sun, the sunlight um, as a form to heal. So I, I think that's really interesting too. Yeah, I, I, I apologize. My connection is just terrible. This is just kind of a comedy of errors today. Um, <laughs> to your point, I, what I was going to share is, um, I think getting outside is so important. Um, but with regards to vitamin D, you know, based on latitude and longitude, most people are not getting enough UVB rays. And it's those UVB rays which generate the vitamin D. Um, and where I live in the Pacific Northwest and other people, we're just not getting enough. So I think it's so valuable that you do the testing and, and you encourage, and that's part of your workout because most people will need supplementation in order to get them into that optimal level and be able to get the benefits for immunity and such. Um, to your point about uh, Eric, you, about using phototherapy for management, so it's a very delicate balance because we harness the power of the sun to suppress our immune system. So conditions like atopic dermatitis and psoriasis, it's because our immune systems are a little bit revved up, increased scale, skin cell turnover and inflammation. So the UVB um, rays will suppress the immune system. On the flip side of that, that's how cancer happens. Mm. And that's why skin cancer is the most prevalent cancer in this country. So it is a very fine line. And when people get phototherapy, it's for seconds or minutes at a time. It is not for extended periods of time. So, you know, I'm all about getting out in the sun, but I think with a word of caution, um, you, you still um, need to be mindful that the sun is very powerful um, for a very good reason, but especially depending on your skin type um, and and the underpinnings of your health status, you you really do need that protection. And so there are windows. If you're ideally, you go for those um, walks with your patients that it's earlier in the morning or later in the afternoon, and really checking those um, the the UV index to make sure that you're not you know, going out at the peak hours where you're going to potentially get that burn and, and the increased sun damage. But certainly to your point also about food, there are so many foods that we can consume that help bolster our own body's innate ability to fight the UV damage that's happening. So right. for and so I mean, many reasons, yeah. Correct. And I really think we have to look at it again from the big picture. What else is going on in the body, you know? Totally antioxidant status because i would argue that a hundred years ago we were not inside all the time but melanoma was not even on the radar yet right and so it's probably all these other toxins and radiation in combination with sun exposure um, and prolonged sun exposure uh, and dangerous kind of sun exposure in the middle of the day that then it's really multifactorial and we have to look at it and take a step back and what, again, what's our overall environment, so. I would 100% agree with you. And to your point about, you know, back in the day, skin cancer wasn't as much of an issue. If you look back at what they were wearing, they also were very covered up. There was no such thing as a teeny weeny bikini, right? <laughs> so, so I think, you know, taking, taking everything into account, absolutely. This is why when I work with people, I, I really don't focus. I want everyone to know how to examine their skin because it is having been diagnosed with melanoma myself. It is, you know, it was the premise of why I wrote the skin whisperer. Your skin is sending you messages all the time. So mm -hmm. learning how to check your skin, you literally can save your own life. As, as a clinician, I can help support you and, and confirm things, but each one of us has the power to, to, to heal themselves, as what you've been saying. But um, so it is definitely multifactorial for sure, for sure. But I think, you know, um, it is our lifestyle and not necessarily getting a lot of time outside, but I, sun protection is still a huge component, especially if um, for aging, we're talking about all those products that, that um, Erica is benefiting from, that Rachel recommends and I do as well. And in order to get your return on the investment, 90% of the aging process, what we visibly see on the skin is from sun exposure. So it's all about, in some ways, as much balance as we can. So I love that. Um, so what, you know, you had mentioned getting outside and food and all the things, but what kind of fun things are you doing, um, you know, with your family outside? What can you do together to really maximize that, that benefit of being in nature? 
Yeah. So one of our, so I have, you know, two middle-aged kids, teens, <laughs> not quite teenagers. Um, and what we love to do is just go to like lakes, natural bodies of water. We're lucky that there's a lake not too far away that we can swim in. There is a river that I take the kids down to in the summer um, and we, we swim in the lake. So I, I, that's just always such a freeing and positive experience for all of us. Um, we also love to eat outside. We have this nice little tree. You can eat out on your balcony, but we just let, like to sit outside and, and eat outside, um, you know, to the point where my family is like, oh, it's really hot outside. Do we really have to eat? So I try to do that as much as possible. Um, when the kids were younger, we would make it special and do like a picnic um, in the garden. That's always, you know, sit, sit on the ground, sit on the little little grass patch. Um, we would go for nature walks and my kids were, were lucky that we went to a, um, a Waldorf inspired preschool. So they would take the kids on nature walks and point out all the little flies and creatures and, and pick things from, you know, the side of the, the walkway and then later put it in a smoothie because the teacher knew what was edible and what wasn't edible. So I think just early early on um, having involved my kids in, wow, look at this and look at that and there's nature here and we can swim here. So I think that that played a big role in um, our family's connection to nature. Um, we still, to this point, my, my 11 year old daughter has this little outside fairy garden that she just keeps adding to and the imagination um, and the free, thinking and spirit that just kind of comes out of that is just so beautiful to watch. So mm -hmm. I think that element of, of play and freedom is something like our children, just as we are role models for our children, they are such role models for us because as adults, I think we've forgotten that. Yeah. And just that freedom um, and joy. And, you know, I think again, and, and Stacy will, will speak to this, I'm sure with the media of, what we think that we're supposed to do and it look a certain way and we're going outside because we have to work out so right. that we can fit into our skinny jeans or what have you but looking to our kids to show us like just be free have fun like let's garden like that all counts so i love that i love that you're sharing that right now yeah and so keeping that wild side of our kids going right not putting them into too much of a box but just letting them run free and, and be wild because we're, we've yeah. been too domesticated as women specifically, I think, you know, mm -hmm. but that's a different topic. <laughs> well, I, I, but I love that because I think so much when I was talking earlier, you know, about permission and self-love and loving all the parts of you. And I think, you know, when we were in school or younger, if, if, you know, there was, we were always told that if you showed your emotion that you were too sensitive, or mm -hmm. if you colored outside the lines that, that, that was not a good thing, but to celebrate that, to, mm -hmm. that is what makes us who it we are. It makes us human. It makes us human and um, it really, that's where that radiance and that glow, being able to accept all those parts, not just the pretty parts, but the parts that may have been criticized or cast aside before and really embrace that. And so allowing, encouraging our children and using them as our muses to bring that back into our life, I think is so, so powerful. Right. So I'm so, so glad and so grateful that you brought that to our, you know, attention in, into the conversation. So, um, so how do you recommend that we keep ourselves clean without stripping or damaging the microbiome? Because that is a big topic, right? I mean, yeah. the skin microbiome, yeah. the gut microbiome. Well, uh, I think clean is overrated. <laughs> and by clean, I... I also, I mean, you know, sanitizing clean because of course now we know that the hand sanitizer that had triclosan in it mm. wasn't our friend and actually nope. has been linked to cancer. So I think clean is overrated. I think sometimes water is good enough. Um, um, and I'm sure you guys uh, and Rachel, you can speak much more as to what skin products don't strip um, mm. our microbiome and the natural oils, but mm. um, but the way that we sort of keep it in, in my house is that, you know, sometimes water is enough and sometimes vinegar is good enough to clean the surface. And sometimes essential oils are, are what we use to, to clean our house. Um, 
we don't take showers every day. Is that too much information? <laughs> <laughs> you know, my kids didn't get a bath every single night. Um, if they're dirty, I can spot clean them. So, um, so we just, you know, we try not to get too weirded out by the natural dirt. You know, I think if it's from the outside, for the most part, it's probably healthy and it's good for us. So that's why I think clean is a little overrated. <laughs> yeah. And I, I don't disagree. I think we've gotten to a point where we're causing more harm than good, especially with the hand sanitizers and hand washing and um, individuals whose the integrity of their skin barrier is broken down. They're already a little bit more prone to irritation. And depending on the cleansers that you're using, it may raise the pH of the skin um, and just mess with that balance. So I think um, that's really important. Yeah, to keep that in mind. We are now, now starting to use probiotic products and I don't know how you feel about them, but from a functional medicine standpoint, we are now using bugs to eat. We are now using oral fecal transplants. You know, 10, mm -hmm. 15 years ago, that would have been unheard of. So, you know, bacteria aren't all bad. Right, Dirt no, they aren't are all bad. <laughs> Totally, I agree. Um, especially for the skin microbiome, the research coming out that there's uh, bacteria on the skin to help protect from sun protection and protect us from. We're, we're utilizing it, so it's so exciting what's what's happening, what's on, on on the horizon. So, thank you so much for sharing all this amazing information. I would love for you to share how people can find you and work with you. Um, they can, I, I have a private practice in the Sacramento area, but we do telehealth. So um, we, they can find me on elkacookmd.com or also on um, Instagram under elkacookmd. Um, so I'd love to see some of you guys there. Thank you so much. Amazing. Thank Amazing. So much. And so I'm going to, yeah, my pleasure. I'm so glad that we had this time. So I am going to hand it back over to Rachel because um, we have some more exciting conversation ahead. So yeah, Rachel, that, all you. That, that was so much fun. And what's really fun when you guys are talking about the trees and being around the trees, this is actually something that my mom's on the call here listening. And I think my aunt is on here as well. So we were in Alberta. We had a family member pass away. And life is very different um, in other households because I don't watch TV, right? We're gonna talk with Stacey Lindsay shortly here, who's a multimedia journalist veteran, but I'm not used to being around TV and like that high beta state that the news keeps us in. So I told my mom and my aunt, we're going outside, we're going for a walk, and so we're all like a little bit sad or whatever. And I, and I told them, I'm like, put your hand on the tree, just say thank you to the tree, let's just do this like fun little silly exercise together. And I kid you not, by the end of that walk, they were skipping and holding hands and acting like children. So let's not underestimate the power of, of uh, getting outside. Dr. Elka Cook, I know we talked about this in a podcast uh, on, on my podcast, Rachel Varga podcast, where we got into this. And uh, yeah, so that was really cool. We've had a couple of questions come in. You guys are awesome. A lot of you guys have been here the whole time. And the questions that I'm seeing are about how to get really good sun exposure in. I'll share what my routine is. First thing in the morning when I get ready at the window in my bathroom, I actually get the, the morning sun and I actually let that sun sort of um, get into my eyes on my skin first thing in the morning. That's really what we want to do is get, you know, about like 10 minutes or so first thing in the morning. That's when the, some of the UV rays are going to be lower. So when we're talking about UV, so days like today, it's just gorgeous out, you know, blue skies. We're getting a lot of UVB rays. These are the burning rays. They, you know, they reach kind of like this deep in the skin. The UVA rays, which are the aging rays, are sort of the cloudy days. They reach a little deeper. But the blue light from our devices is really, yeah, Dr. Kirbar, you're nodding here. This gets deeper. So there were some questions about people that have had previous skin cancers. You always want to follow the direction of your physician. This is an educational and informational event here. This is not to be taken as medical advice. 
but but do really be intentional about your full body exposure get that full body exposure in the morning you could even possibly consider some at home red light therapy devices so this is this whole other this is a whole other topic and i'd love to dive into this maybe in a later session but do just do what you can in the morning first the first thing when you get up to to get that yeah i just want to hop in for just a second i think that that's really important to get um as i had mentioned earlier early early exposure and later in the afternoon yes. but that's really the focus of what i do when i work with people is kind of bolster having had skin cancer myself having that been the focus of my career really creating an internal foundation there are supplements there's lifestyle things like it really can map out a step-by-step -step process for people so that they can enjoy that time outside as dr cook has just emphasized getting out inside in nature is so so important but there's absolutely a lot of things that can be done so you get all the benefits of the sun without the burn so don't feel like you have to be a hermit but um mm -hmm. you know reach out to me because i don't want you to have to feel like you can't get outside um you absolutely can yes thank you for making yourself available and being a great resource to everybody on the call so everyone uh cecilia we had uh christian reach out with questions so please follow up with Dr. Kira Barr after this, she'd be happy to help you. Okay, so next up, we have Stacy Lindsay here. And so Stacy Lindsay, we had the pleasure of meeting. And as soon as I met Stacy, she was just a woman with a mission. I knew I had to meet her, just like this, yeah. this ray of light. And so, so Stacey Lindsay is a veteran multimedia journalist and has a particularly unique perspective on the health and beauty industry, having worked as an editor and consultant for some of the world's most well-known beauty brands. What's particularly amazing about Stacey is that she really gets radiance. And we talk about this in a previous episode on YouTube and podcasts uh, that I host. She really understands that when women step into their power and shine bright. Their impact on the world is so much more powerful. She's also the editorial director of The Conscious Investor, where she reports on why now more than ever, we need to make smarter consumer decisions. Remember how I mentioned at the beginning of this call, everyone's just buying stuff on sale, their skincare, they're ordering online like crazy. We really have to be cognizant of the the businesses that we support at this time where those products are coming from and we need to do our due diligence to support providers and brands that prioritize social impact and health so stacy take it away thank you for joining us today oh my gosh thank you so i just i have been a sponge for the past hour this has been absolutely incredible and i love how we've been kind of going off maybe in slightly different directions but everything seems to be coming back to this north star and it's about again taking a beat looking looking internally you know looking at yourself and not feeling like you have to feed into this bigger corporate message and that's just been a really really big learning for me over my journalistic career and of course over my adult life but as i mentioned this earlier in, in the talk it's been a profound thing for me to actually, as a journalist who has worked in women's, you know, female identifying media for a very, very long time, to actually step back and to think, to, to realize I have a responsibility. Of course, we all have a responsibility as consumers, but I have a responsibility as a professional who works in the media to not actually feed into this message and continue to perpetuate it. I don't want to do that anymore. And I know that there's a lot of good intention, but there's an old saying in journalism, and particularly I used to work in the news, it's follow the money. So of course, you know, if you want to unpack a story, you kind of follow the money. And we can look at a lot of that, of course, with what's going on with the products that are being fed to us and sort of this marketing messaging. Is it really good for us? Do we really, quote, need this? Or is this just a bigger, you know, kind of marketing hype to get us to buy more stuff? So it's, yeah, it's a, it's a huge passion of mine. It's a huge passion of mine to report on this and to kind of see different trends and, and how people are... Um, I think starting to become more discerning and starting to really start to slow down and to realize maybe I don't need X, Y, and Z. Maybe I need A, B, C, D because that's what's good for me. So it's something I can talk about it for days, for days and days and days. And I think it just circles back to, it circles back to beauty. It circles back to wellness. It circles back to really everything, everything in our lives. Mm -hmm. So one of my favorite things to dive into with you is radiance. And I really want you to uncover uncover this and for you guys tuning into this call 
these ladies here, they're seen on, you know, Oprah, Mind Body Green. Stacy was the, um, you know, the former articles editor at Goop Magazine. Like these are some just incredible players and game changers in the space of, of health, beauty and wellness. And I really want you to unpack for everybody what is what you feel like yeah. true beauty and radiance is. Oh, it's such a good question. And I have to say I have I've done a lot of research and I've I've put a lot of thought into this, but I've also done a lot. I, I'm a as a journalist, I'm a watcher, you know, I just yeah. sort of I'm so fascinated by human nature and by the way, you know, people do certain things. And I think in overall for the women that I admire, and I'll talk about uh, primarily a lot of public facing women in particular, what they do to, as you say, stay radiant and to stay vibrant. There's a few things that are in, we've touched upon two of them. And I'm going to go back to the beginning of the conversation and echo this, of course, sleep, honoring, honoring, honoring sleep, because if you don't have ample rest, if you don't have quality sleep, obviously you can't optimally, uh, kind of function during the day, of course. Um, hand in hand with that too is proper hydration. All these powerhouse women that I've worked, you know, had the privilege to either be mentored by or to work with, they put those, they make those paramount. But we've talked about this before, Rachel, and this is something that I, a tip that I've picked up and I to pick this up actually from the CEO of, of Goop is Moving every day, but scheduling that, giving your health, first of all, credence like you would a meeting or you have right. to see clients or anything yes. like that. But it's so, so, so important because it's so easy not to do that. I can obviously speak for myself, my schedule. I might say, oh my gosh, I have two interviews this morning and then I have to do a live shot you know, early in the afternoon and then I have to do this. There's no room to work out. Mm -hmm. Well, if you put it in your schedule, you know, things are malleable. Totally. So you'll find the room for it. You'll make it work. And that is a trick that I've picked up from, from these so many women. They put it in their planner, no matter what, no matter what they have going on that day, they have to, you know, whether it's working out or if it's getting outside for a walk, whatever it is that works for you, but moving your body, that's what keeps, you know, ultimately that's what feeds into this incredible vitality. Mm -hmm. And then I, all of these are just important, but number four is one that as I, it's a learning process for me. And I think it's, a, it's an ultimately a journey, I think for so many women, but it's just keep moving forward and not looking right or left, you know, look, moving forward and going and forming your own path and not comparing yourself to others. We've heard it. We've heard it many times before, but we really have to keep hearing it. And we have to keep telling it to ourselves and we have to keep telling it to those that we really care about too, and to, to our community of women. Don't compare yourselves. It's so hard to, especially if you're in a public facing role, or even if you're not, you know, you see images of people everywhere. Now you go onto Instagram and you go on Facebook or, and it's so hard. You might be feeling great that day. And then suddenly, oh, shucks. You know, I look at this woman and she looks, I think she looks even better in her pink top than, no, don't even go there because you're just going to spend so much energy and all that amazing energy could be put towards something else. You know, you're, a book you want to write or a great speech you want to give or anything at all. So I've really learned that from the women that I've, that I value in, in the media. And I've been working on that myself. Just do not compare. Don't even give that any credence because yeah, yeah it's true. negative. Yeah. And speaking of books, I'm uh, thrilled to have you contribute and do the oh, I'm so excited. And, I can't and wait. And a whole section. And you know what, this whole talk about confidence and, and skin beauty and radiance so much of what contributes towards beauty and radiance is free and you know your skin yeah we got to do things to to impact the the health and quality of our skin too and you're following a really nice at-home routine as well how how are things thanks to you out? yes i am i know it's amazing i i was I mean, erica the same way i was it was like the holidays opening up this package and all these the products that you recommended and a bit and, and I I it's funny because I think in a past life I was a dermatologist because I'm obsessed with skin so I'm a sponge I'm always wanting to just glean new information but the simple things that we really tend to overlook like washing twice a day you know I would just be one I could just splash water in my face in the morning and kind of call it a day literally and then I'll wash at night but getting back and being consistent. And it's now more important than ever too, as our schedules, so many of us are working more at home and kind of schedules are changing. So we sort of get off routines or don't give them the credence that, they, that we should. So I've gotten back on and I've been following all your advice, Rachel. And of course, keeping a big thing of water next to me at all times, staying hydrated. But 
it's the cleansing and then really leaning into those clean, good serums, the things that work really well for my skin, um, exfoliating once or twice a week. I feel great. It's been really, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. And with, for you and I, we have a particular skin type. We don't have a lot of melanin in our, in our skin. So we need to actually work a little harder to protect it from things like skin cancers. Yeah. So we are com craving community now more than ever, which is also kind of calling us to really think about how we consume. Mm. And I know that you write for an organization called The Conscious Investor. So I would really like for you to share with us a little bit about that mm -hmm. and how we can just start to be smarter consumers for not only ourselves, but also our environment. Yeah, thank you for asking that. The Conscious Investor, it's a digital, it's a weekly digital magazine, and it really was born out of the conversation that we're having right now. Ultimately, I co-founded it with Eva Yazhari. And what's fun about it is Eva comes, approaches it from, um, she was an investor that worked in Wall Street. So she really approaches it from a financial perspective. I, of course, approach it from the researcher journalist perspective. And we really meet in the middle. And ultimately, the ethos of the magazine is talking about how our money and our actions ultimately have the power to do incredible good. Mm -hmm. And it can be, and we, we do do a lot of unpacking of what, what impact investing. So investing so you can actually get a, a financial, measurable financial return, but also make a measurable impact on society or on the environment. And for so long too, I always say, I'm a scrappy journalist. I'm like, this, is, this talk isn't for me, you know, investing all of that, no. And then I started actually really, I started uncovering it, reporting on it and realizing this is for everyone. And when we start really becoming, I, and I use the word discerning a lot, but becoming discerning consumers, taking a pause, doing a research and really looking at, the products that we're buying, the, the messages that are being fed to us, taking our autonomy back by doing that. And then at the next step, what we do decide to buy, there's a lot of power in that. So being a quote impact, you know, an impactor or an impact investor, it can mean, you know, I want to invest a certain amount of money toward this great company that's doing this incredible service and really helping society. Or it can also be I'm actually going to be a little bit smarter with my dollars and I'm not going to actually buy this product with this beautiful packaging, but it actually has some really bad hidden ingredients and it's actually perpetuating kind of a negative message because doing a little more research, this company may be promoting, you know, coal company or they they may not treat women really well. So it's mm -hmm. about taking a breath, really taking a pause and reconsidering how we consume. And there is tremendous, tremendous power in that. And it's something I call it the small win. It may seem sort of like a, like a small step, but of course, if we do it consistently, cumulatively, it can make a profound difference. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're going to dive into some questions here. What are some of the key self-care strategies you see some of the most beautiful and influential women doing? Yeah. You know, I'll circle back to, I think the scheduling again, I can't say it enough because it's, it's about allowing yourself that time. It's about allowing that time in your schedule mm -hmm. and, you know, echoing, echoing what I've mentioned too. It's just so easy to overlook that. It's so easy to get up like, Oh gosh, in a rush. I don't have time for X, Y, and Z. Of course, so many of us, I, I am not a mother, but so many of us, of course, listening and here today on our panel are, you know, you can, you can just kind of push your needs second, third, fourth so quickly, but again, scheduling it and making it just as important as that 10 a.m. meeting, just as important to do your, you know, whatever time works for you, but to do that workout, that I think is the absolute, absolute number one. And I've mentioned before, but I have to say it was, it was Gwyneth at Goop who taught me that because that woman, of course, she's a powerhouse. She is so busy. She works so hard. She does not miss a workout. And she's a mother of two as well, leading this huge corporation. She doesn't miss a workout. She schedules it in. And I, there's, you know, it's profound. She just actually pencils it in. So I would say that that's number, number one. Yeah, I think that's great. And if we can have people around us in our household that are going to keep us accountable as well. Yeah. 
that's a little tip. So I happen to know that my husband's moderating this and listening to this too. And he keeps me in check, which is great. But I've have heard that before to actually put it in your calendar for times to work out. But, you know, if you have daughters, mothers in your household, keep each other accountable. Okay, let's go outside for a walk. Let's get our nature time. Like what Dr. Elko Cook was talking about, some strategies there. So why is it more important than ever to support business who work towards positive social impact. This is really important because where you get your household beauty products, supplements, cleaning products, everything that you purchase Mm -hmm. does have this connection to it if you allow it. Yeah. So this is really a bigger social conversation. This is actually a conversation that touches, I think, every aspect of our lives. So we can circle this back, of course, to beauty and wellness, but this touches upon everything. And it's not just impacting us. This is impacting the world globally because of course Mm. we're all interconnected now more than we ever have. You know, we can thank globalization for that, you know, but there is what we decide, you know, a decision I make here today for a certain product I'm going to maybe buy or a certain food I'm going to consume ultimately in some way that will have an impact on somebody potentially across the globe. And what I mean by that is when we become more discerning consumers and we start to really research some of these companies or all of these companies where we're buying products from. How asking questions, it all starts and ends with asking questions and just being curious. And it's a big, this is a big thing to to bite off or to chew or whatnot. So we can't fix this overnight, but just by starting to ask questions and starting to be a little bit more curious, we're actually going to be putting positive, you know, positive pressure on these companies to change their practices for the better. So some things that I mean are looking into the company and seeing how they treat women. You know, do they promote women? Do they promote people of color on their board? Do they, do they actually, you know, again, what is the morale of the company? What are the overall ethics? What is the packaging that they use? Mm-hmm. What are the material materials that they use? Um, do they make, you know, positive contributions to certain charities or not? It's about values. It's really, really a conversation about values. Because again, by supporting maybe particularly a company, company, and it's hard to know from face value, so you have to do some digging. But if we're supporting a certain company that maybe does not promote women, we're actually, as consumers, perpetuating the problem globally. You may think, oh gosh, my just one purchase for maybe a $25 cream, it's, it's making a bigger, it's, it echoes, and it makes a bigger impact. So it goes back to, again, asking questions because the implications are really, really huge. And taking a pause, again, becoming a more discerning consumer and starting with doing your research. I think it can be, and not not taking things for face value as well, but this can go as far as, there's some great resources out there where you can research companies and do deeper dive, but I've talked about this before and I'll continue to talk about this. I am such an advocate for the cold email. Just send send an email to a company, start asking them things. Hey, how do you handle this? Or where do you source this? Or because if they have, if they don't have something to hide, I would think even if they're a very busy company, everybody's busy, they'll write you back. They're excited because if they're proud of their practices, they want to, they want to boast that. And most likely if they have something to hide, maybe that's when you should kind of dig a little deeper too and put some more pressure on it. So, but this, so somebody may ask, well, Stacy, how does this go back to beauty and or wellness. And ultimately this goes back to autonomy. It's all about autonomy, being autonomy with our health, being autonomy with our beauty, being autonomy, autonomous with our ultimately self-esteem and not feeding into that bigger corporate message, that bigger corporate message that we have to look a certain way. We have to buy this product, taking a beat and actually realizing, you know what, I'm going to research and consider this smaller company over here Maybe the product is a little bit more expensive or whatnot. Maybe it might take a little bit longer to ship to me, but this company actually practices, has practices in place that are aligned with my values. They, you know, take care of women. They use responsible packaging, all of that. I'm going to support this brand. So there's many, many, many facets to it. And it's actually really exciting when you start to dig in, but again, the power, the power is huge. Yeah. And another little tip, if you're looking at online businesses, just look at some of the free content they're putting out. What's the underlying messages in that? Such a good point. Does it resonate with you? And even when you're looking at working with providers like Dr. Kira Barr, Dr. Erica Gray, Dr. Elka Cook, and myself, how do you feel around them? How do you feel when you're kind of listening to their podcasts or interviews or, or whatever? Or when you're meeting with people in real life, 
how do you feel? Do you feel like you're being sold stuff? Are you rushed? Tune into that. That's, you know, your inner guidance assistance is there for a reason. I love that you say that, Rachel, because I'll, I'll add to that too. And it's a story I am so proud of. And I, and I reference this story quite a bit, but one of my favorite shoe brands is a shoe company called Frida Salvador. And I've loved them for several, several years. And randomly one day I was thought, you know, I'm just going to send them an email just to say, I love what you're doing to support them. Mm -hmm. They wrote me right back. Of course, they ended up inviting me to come to their factory to kind of see how their shoes are made behind the scenes. So I really, really ended up in it, kind of created this beautiful friendship, but I learned and, and, you know, they were, they had nothing to hide. And I went over to Spain with them and saw that their shoes are really made by hand. They do source ethical fabrics. They treat their employees like family. It was, um, it was absolutely amazing. And then it gives them a boost too, to keep doing what they're doing and to, to not to sell out. So mm-hmm. it's all full circle. Yeah, <laughs> that's such an important message, by the way. I just, I can just echo you, that. Kathy. I think it's so important that we don't outsource our health and our wellness and that we know that we, that it's more about our closer community and that we know where things are coming yes. from rather than that globalization of ordering it from you know where and Absolutely. you know you don't know who's involved and what their ethics are behind it. I think that is such, and I, I really hope that we are moving toward this. I do too. And I also, I am so thankful that um, I, I, I feel like every single one of you ladies just makes me so hopeful that you're all spreading the message that has to be heard. Mm-hmm. Thank you. That's beautiful. Thanks, Dr. Cook. And I just wanted to hop in on this because I love the fact that when you have to ask questions, you don't impulse buy. Right. And you yeah. take yes. the time. And having read Marie Kondo's book, yeah. and you have to ask, you know, does this bring me joy? Yeah. Um, but asking those questions is like, does this company bring me joy? Mm-hmm. And so now you're actually making more responsible decisions. You're not bringing excess stuff into your house, which increases stress and anxiety because now you have to spend your life organizing it versus being outside in nature versus doing things for ourselves. So I just, I love that thought of oh. asking the questions first. Oh, Erica, thank you so much yeah. for saying that because it really, it, there is so much power in that too. And it's, co- it's a cool conversation to have with yourself as well. And you think, okay, and this can, this can be related to con- consumption or it can even be related to food or many other things too. What's going on here? Do I really genuinely want this or is this actually feeding some other unmet need right now? What's going on? But just taking a beat. And because I'm not against consuming, I'm not against buying, treating yourself. I'm all for that, but I'm just, yeah, but there's a lot of power and a lot of information in taking that pause. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wholeheartedly love this conversation and I think you know, the beauty industry is a $500 billion industry, which is an insane amount of money because you were talking about consumerism. And the crazy thing is when studies are done, they survey women and men, you know, only 2% of women feel beautiful. Men aren't that far behind, only 9%. So despite all this money being spent, right, there's such a disconnect and it's so devastating, um, which is why I'm so glad we're having these conversations because it needs to shift. And so for me, that's why I stepped away from um, traditional practice because I feel like the delivery of what skincare truly is needs to change. That conversation needs to change. Mm-hmm. Yes, we need the topical mm-hmm. products and, and, and there's some medical grade. Clearly you and uh, Dr. Erica have benefited. I, t- I have too, but it is so much more than what we're being sold as a product. And being able to take that power back and being able to empower, like know that we already have everything we need as your largest organ, your skin is the most resilient. It gets stretched, it gets cut, it gets bruised, and we bounce in, it bounces back. And it's a metaphor for our entire lives. Like if your skin, take it, you know, your skin is the role model, like, especially in a time like right now, um, we're having to shift and change, but, but we will, we will heal. We will grow from this and learn powerful lessons that'll just make us that much better and be able to really ask those questions, get really curious. What is it that we want for ourselves? How do we want to feel? How do we want to live moving forward? Um, so it's, it's all of this. And I'm just so grateful to every single one of you on this panel that has raised these incredibly important points because it's all part of life and, and how we take care of our skin and our resilience and vitality and, and what we can pass on to our families. So, so thank you so much. That was beautiful. Thank you. 
I have one final question for Stacey Lindsay here, and this is just really critical stuff here. When it comes to beauty marketing, so mm. you having been, um, you know, multimedia journalist veteran on some of the biggest broadcasting networks in the world, greenwashing. This yeah. is huge. And I was, I was on a, an interview just right before this talking about just this. And it's so hard for people to know what's actually healthy. You know, what is green? What's natural? What's non-toxic? What's chemical free? Like these are these are all terms that we see in marketing. So, so tell us a little bit about greenwashing and what do we need to know to protect ourselves and our environment? Thank you for asking that because this is another thing that is ubiquitous and it touches upon every single, I think every single industry known to us right now. And it's something that is a, it's a challenge. It's one that we are facing right now that we, we can overcome this challenge, of course, but it's a, we have to chip away at it. So there's no, unfortunately, there's no kind of one size fits all answer, but it goes back to asking questions. So greenwashing, of course, it's just savvy marketing. Um, we always have to. Marketing exists for a reason. And I think there's good intention behind it. Of course, you have a great product. You want people to, you want to get it in front of people. You want people to buy it. I understand that. On the other end of it, though, you also want to make sure, is this, as we've been talking about, is this good for me? Is this the product mm -hmm. for me? So when you greenwashing, we've been seeing it, and it actually has been coming, there's different terms too, blue washing now, pink washing now, but they basically mm -hmm. all are about saying, claiming something. And you have to be really careful about claims too, and I know you could, you could speak to that even more. So you have to be really careful about claims, but saying something is a certain, you know, let's say organic, which is a very easy default when in fact it's technically maybe not organic or maybe, maybe it's only a small percentage of organic. Mm -hmm. yeah. So not taking things at face value. It's people can be very, 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 there's a lot of loopholes they can get around when in mm -hmm. regard to certain rules and regulations, not taking things at face value and again, being a discerning consumer. So taking that pause and okay, I have a jar of maybe this organic face cream. It looks beautiful. It looks great. Do your research. And I mean that for something that you put in your body, put on your body, you know, put on your body topically, clothes, all of it. Take a pause, do your research. Yeah. Again, there's some great resources out there. I'm a big proponent. I'm, an, I'm a big supporter of the EWG for what they do too. You can mm -hmm. sort of vet mm -hmm. different products, of course. And yeah, but greenwashing is a big thing. And we see it a lot too. Going back to the financial conversation, we see it a lot in the financial world with impact investing. Somebody may claim that they're, an, you know, this is an impact investment when, in, sen when it's, in a sense, it's actually not making measurable social impact in this particular community. So you got to do your research. And it's tiring. I know it's sometimes it's like, man, I just want to buy something and I just want to relax. You can't, you know, same with the news too, you know, everything. You got to think, okay, you know, what are the, re what are the sources that I'm listening to? What, are, what is this news outlet feeding me? What is the agenda? Maybe I should fact check it. I'm a big, get fact checking it. Mm -hmm. Same thing with your health too. Getting one or two pieces of advice. Well, actually fact checking those, getting a third piece of advice. So, mm -hmm. but asking questions, not taking things at face value, really honoring and respecting your autonomy. It is your right to take a pause and to ask questions. And again, send those emails to company. How do you do this or where do you source that? Yeah. And just to conclude this final question here, when it comes to skincare formulations, when something says it's green, eco-friendly, chemical free, those really actually don't mean anything from a chemistry perspective. What you really want to be watching for are products that are free of parabens, phthalates, sulfates, artificial dyes, fragrances, and you can even go a step further and do some genetic analysis testing and functional lab tests and see which particular ingredients and, uh, and whatnot could actually maybe be okay for someone else, but maybe not great for you. So it can be tricky for people to navigate this. And so that's kind of why I've actually started being a little bit more present online because I see this problem and I know that everyone on the call is is uh, really working towards their own life purpose to help the community uh, live a lighter brighter more more radiant life so Stacy where can people find you Oh, thanks for asking, Rachel. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Stacey, S-T-A-C-E-Y-L-I-N-D-S-A-Y, Stacey Lindsay, and my website, Stacey Ann, A-N-N, Lindsay.com, and um, theconsciousinvestor.co, too. We're going to be unpacking more of this conversation there. So I welcome you to find me anywhere. 
and those three outlets. Thank you. Awesome. So let's uh, start to wrap up this beautiful circle here. We've had some lovely people on the whole time. I also just put a, um, a question, call to action in the chat. We're going to be taking some questions here. I do want to be aware of, of our time here. We've answered some questions as they come through, which is fantastic. So thank you to everyone who's joined us. And yeah, let's just open it up for some final remarks. I just want to say thank you, Rachel, for bringing us all together because this has been such a fascinating exchange of ideas and thought processes. And it's so neat to find all of us being so aligned and coming at these with such different perspectives. And I'm walking away from this conversation with some, you know, like, like Stacy was saying, okay, like I need to do a little bit more research. I need to be a little bit more thoughtful about these things. And, and what Kira was saying about the, the cortisol and, you know, and, and Dr. Cook with the microbiome, it's just that, like, there's a lot of the things that I have heard about, thought about, but really this has been this opportunity to bring it all together and integrate it. So thank you to all of you. Fantastic. Yeah. And I, I, I also, I just would like to echo that. I, I, I'm going away from this conversation feeling very hopeful mm-hmm. in a time where I wasn't sure, you know, who to, you know, who to trust, what to think. Thank you. There are still people out there that, you know, care for our environment, care for doing the right things, care for doing the right things for our patients. So I, I feel like I'm walking away from the conversation with you ladies and feeling hopeful. So thank you. Lovely. I'm going to echo that. I'm going to echo that, Elke. Thank you. Because hope is, that's what we have, right? And each other. So I have, I, this has been an exponential continued, um, like a continuing education class for me. I'm so grateful for it. But it, it, it is, it's just approaching this too, which is so amazing as we all come from various, pers- we all have different perspectives and we all have different, uh, different walks of life, of course. We're all on our own journey, but we can all really meet at this beautiful point of, um, of care and hope. So thank you so much. Erica, thank you so much. Kira, it was great to see you. Thank you. And Rachel, yeah. thank you as always. So mm-hmm. appreciate this. Yeah. Thank you. I just, are. Yeah, go for it. I was just going to say, I am I learned a lot. Um, and it's exciting. I think the themes here are connection, community, autonomy, curiosity, and that idea that, you know, it all begins from within that idea of comparison, I think is, is um, pervasive and it really can bring us down. And remembering that regardless of how, what you think in the moment, you're, you came into this world 100% lovable, you're 100% worthy and you have the ability to take charge, ask those questions and really be able to heal yourself. Obviously, none of us do it alone. I have had my own health struggles and, and I still have my mentors and and you know we all need help. And I think one of the greatest acts of self-care um, is asking for help, especially in a time now. It's not a sign of weakness. Um, just like penciling in, you know, our workouts, um, penciling in that time to, you know, go to your practitioner or coach or therapist or whoever it is to help you thrive. Because we weren't meant to come and you know do all of this alone. So I'm grateful that today we were able to create a community amongst us. Um, but going forward too, that's going to be even more important. So I just want to say thank you. Thank you for creating this space for all of us. Mm -hmm. And it's just great going through the chat here. Lots of people are saying, I love this info. Awesome. Thank you very much. I happen to know that uh, some people listening are coming all the way from Iceland. Uh, Cecilia and her daughter are watching from Iceland. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, this is just fantastic. So I'm thrilled that you guys were able to get some information here. A lot of people had questions about, well, how to get our, our vitamin D exposure properly without har- harming our skin and perpetuating skin cancers. That was awesome. We talked about how to make smarter decisions with your product purchases. So working with someone to actually, you know, go through and customize things for you and how to reduce you know, really reduce the opportunity for you to fall into consumer pitfalls, such as greenwashing and some of the marketing ploys out there. And of course, talking about the importance of getting into nature, we, you know, the trees are critical. You can just spend some time today showing gratitude to the trees. They give us the oxygen that we breathe. So imagine what else 
that they are doing for us. This is getting a little bit woo now, but really that is an aspect to, to radiance and, you know, do what feels right for you. Listen to your body in terms of your body, my spirit energy. But the more and more I just commune with incredible uh, thought leaders like you all here, the more I learn that really it's all about balance, balance your body, mind, spirit, energy to bring forth the highest level of, you know, health, skin health, radiance. So there's mothers listening, there's daughters listening, there's men listening from all over. And, you know, you guys showing up today for this event and this call, you're one step closer to becoming your most beautiful, radiant and vibrant version. So if you haven't uh, had a chance to meet me yet or see some of the things that I'm putting out there, I love interviewing just incredible people like these women here on the Rachel Varga podcast, on the YouTube channel. You can follow me at Rachel Varga official. If you haven't yet had a one-on-one -on -one with me, there's some new names here. You can do that and just book a time with me at rachelvarga.ca. Happy to help. All of us that were on this call, we can help you in just varying different ways. So I just wanted to bring forth this resource of just expert guides here to help you on your, your path of bringing your most greatest version forward for many years to come. Because when you shine, other people, places, and things shine around you too. It's as simple as that. So anyone have any final remarks before we close things up? Awesome. Well, thanks everyone for joining us today. We went a little bit over, but I think we really uncovered some beautiful things. So let's all just uh, take a moment to wave goodbye and have a great rest of your day, everybody.